Hello, this is Mr. Bacon Bits, and welcome to another side quest video for Xenoblade Definitive Edition. This one is for Alchemoth, and most of the quests actually end up becoming available as soon as you gain access to this area. You know why? Because... SPOILER WARNING! Basically, all of them are timed quests that expire after a certain moment in the story. So with that said, Hello? this video, as well as, another, as well as other side quest videos, contain story spoilers for that reason. So let's get right into it. First I'll be showing the list of quests as shown in-game, and then show them in chronological order. As usual, let's start the generic quests, starting with the monster quests. The first one in its entirety is from this generic High Entian southwest of the Imperial Palace during the day. Part 1 requires defeating five cruise paggles at Aerith Sea. Part 2 requires defeating three Aerith Ansels at Aerith Sea. And Part 3 requires defeating two Siconia Echidnos at Aerith Sea. I'll go ahead and say that all the monster quests revolve around monsters found at Aerith Sea, so I don't have to say that every time. For Monster Quest 2, you can find it from this Imperial Guard yes. during the night. Part 1 requires defeating three Chloroleas that are found during the night. Part 2 requires defeating 5 Stella X. And Part 3 requires defeating a single Racti Lexus. Monster Quest 3 can be found from this citizen on this helix-like bridge it? north of Melfica Road. Part 1 requires defeating five U9 Hodes at Showdown Cliff. Part 2 requires defeating two Tokos Aluga. And Part 3 requires defeating a single Pelargos Echidno. This guard near the Ascension Hall skip travel point yes. at night has Monster Quest 4. Part 1 requires defeating three Somati Chromars. Part 2 requires defeating four Tussock Chromars. And Part 3 requires defeating five Otal Chromars. Starting the, the material quests, the first one is from this citizen near the main entrance during the day. You'll need to get two glossy Grady fans from Lunar Grady's. Let's continue with this team. <laughs> Hero of the Hongs. You have a mean streak. Material Quest 2 is from a citizen north of Me. the Imperial Palace, by the escalator here. 
She wants five Orluga grass skirts from Orluga in Magna Forest. The third quest is from a guard south of the escalator near the main yes. entrance during the day. He wants three Orluga slacks from Orluga at Aerith Sea. Material Quest 4 can be found from this guy in front of the palace during the day, and requires getting two Lexos beards from Rakti Lexos. Now for the collection quests. The first one is from a citizen here during the day, south of the heart to heart right over there. This greedy girl wants three lots of gold burdock. The second one's from this citizen pacing about underneath it? under the main escalator during the day. He wants two white tails. The third one is from this citizen next to the Fountain of Hope. She wants five star drops here from Alchemoth. Finally, the last collection quest is from yes. the citizen to the very south of the Imperial Palace right here, at night. He wants two spiral lamps from the High Antia Tomb. On to the search quests. The first one is from a citizen northwest of the Fountain of Hope at night. He wants you to find his mother's necklace, which is found halfway on the northern bridge on level 1. Search Quest 2 is from a citizen near the teleporter pad southeast of Fountain of Hope at night. He wants you to find the silver ring for his girlfriend. It's over in the Great Hall in the south wing. The third quest is from a citizen near the northern escalator near the Fountain of Eternity during the day. He wants you to find the merchant's gift he got as he dropped it. It's over below the main escalator near the east wall. Northwest of the Fountain of Hope is a Napan citizen at night with Search Quest 4. He wants you to find the Health Amulet. It's found near the bridge north of the Heart to Heart on this same level. Last of the generic quests, we have the Challenge Ones. The first mm -hmm. one is from the High Indian talking to Anapan southeast of the Fountain of Hope at night. She wants you to defeat proper bandas at Secluded Island for her husband. This unique monster can only be found during the Shooting Star's weather effect. Challenge 2 is from a citizen north of Fountain of Eternity near the Large Pool. He wants you to take on Tempestuous Adigia, Adigia at Hovering Reef 10. It only spawns at night. Shot, 
Challenge three is from a guard at the Great Hall, north yes. of the mural at day. He wants you to defeat Peeling Kerchiefs at Hovering Reef 7. Finally, Challenge 4 is from a citizen far northeast of Fountain of Eternity, near the Far Wall. She wants you to defeat Lightspeed Sonnet at Anu Shore. Anu Shore is north of the skip travel point to High Antia Tomb. After speaking to Galvin and getting him registered on the affinity chart, LeCruz should have a quest for you. He's found at the bottom of the northern staircase in the Great Hall during the day, opposite of Galvin. He wants you to help defeat six Aerith Hilms, since he and Galvin had trouble before with them. Dunben comments on this, but yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a glorified monster quest. Just defeat six Hilms and then go talk to him. Those hilms are birds flying around on, on the beaches of Aerith Sea that have, pardon the language, ball sacks hanging from their beaks. No mercy. What is it? Welcome. Once Larshan is on the affinity chart, Welcome. Galdo has a quest for you. They're both on the same spots as the other two NPCs, they just change shifts at night. Galdo essentially wants you to defeat six archer hoods and then return to him. Again, another glorified monster quest, Shulk comments on it. They're found at Hovering Reef 2 or Showdown Cliff. What is it? Get Merlis on the yeah. affinity chart first. He's found over here. After, his mother Mar Marissa will have a quest. Merlis went off to Aerith Sea to train, and she's worried since Aerith Sea is dangerous. So we need to go find him. He's actually at Hover Hovering Reef 1, so go talk to him. And then return to Marisa to clear this quest. Charlotte comments on this. After clearing the previous quest, you can speak to Merlis for a quest. Dunban comments on this. First, we gotta talk to Cowl, who's on the opposite side of, he of here at night. He's the one responsible for training Merlis. He'll need three lots of murky Aluka water, which can be found from Alukas at Aerith Sea. They're mo found mostly at Latale Shore, so go ahead and collect them, and then give them to Cowl before returning to Merlis and finishing this quest. Get Vidian on the affinity chart, then meet Ariel near the Fountain of Eternity at night for a quest. Sharla will comment. Her problem is that her daughter has suddenly become racist and she wants to know why, and asks you to do it. Unfortunately, to get anything out of Lasunia, you have to have Melia as the party leader. So go ahead and talk to her. Ah, uh, that's painful. So, marine marble can be found at the secret area of Ferris Cave in Aerith Sea during the night. Once you have the two stones she wants, talk to her again. She says she got a dream that the Bionis spoke to her and said only High Entia are worthy and Vidian wrecked her headdress. Well, speak to Ariel to clear the quest. Well? 
me. The prerequisite to this quest is accepting the Frontier Village quest, Destroying the City Trade. Once yes. done, talk to the bouncer over here at night to find out you need a secret club card to get in. The Napon Nello has quite a few, and can be found near the Fountain of Hope. Talk to him to find out he wants three Rufus control units before he'll part with one. Those can be found from Orluga Rufus enemies in the High Antia tomb. Once properly salvaged, give them to Nello to get a card and clear the quest. A Napa named Popipo near the main entrance during the day has a quest. Her son is suddenly scared of going outside all the time now, and Ryan comments about this. Her son is Baroba, and he's right nearby, so talk to him. He wants you to get him five ether roses from Satoru Marsh. There's numerous places you can get them from in that area. Here's just a few. Once you have them, give them to Baroba, and then talk to Popipo again to clear the quest. For this quest, Scarlin is found at the main entrance at night. Ryan will comment on this. He says that whenever he's with his two friends, his chest aches, so he might have fallen for them. He wants you to ask them how they feel about him, as he's worried they might not reciprocate. Well, those high entia are Rickoff and Rosio. Talk to them to find out. They're both at the same place, same time, which is northeast of Fountain of Eternity, near the escalator. Juicy details aside, talk to Scarlin again to clear the quest. Seems like he might be lucky. Right after clearing the previous quest, Scarlin has another. He wants to choose who he wants to go with, Sharla comments it, and it's up to us. This is another branching quest. Talk to Rakoth first to go down the A route, talk to Roseo to go down the B route. This determines the next quest. Whoever you choose, I'll cover both resulting quests. How's things? And here's the one that changes. Scarlin has one more quest. It's him confessing his love to the one he chose, but wants you to do it by delivering a letter, since the two girls are always together and he can't bear the thought of breaking the other's heart. I get you. Depending on who you spoke with first in the previous quest, you give the letter to that girl, and then speak with Scarlin again to seal the deal. For Rosiel, it's together forever. And for Rickoff, it's I love you no matter what. And, uh, without going into specifics, the quest name foreshadows what will happen in the future. Your call. I'll show the unique comments and dialogue for these for each quest. Welcome. What is it? Hey. How's things? Welcome. What is it? Hey. 
Valaren, at the Hope of Spring during the day, has a quest that Ricky will comment on. His son Atael is missing and wants you to find him. He can be found further east of the Fountain of Hope over in the corner here. Talk to him, then talk to Valaren again to clear the quest. Easy enough. The next quest is from Valaren again, and this it? time his daughter has gone missing. They're both troublemakers, aren't they? Sharla has a comment on this. Cyan is around the corner at the shallow water. Just talk to her, and then talk to Valaren again to clear the quest. What is it? What is it? Come and see! Southwest of Malfica Road during the day, Teelan has a quest for you. He wants yeah. you to get nine gold caterpillars from Tefra Cave and return to give them to him. Rather simple, and Shulk has a unique comment about it. At the Fountain of Hope during night, Nello has a quest for you that Dunben comments on. He's got a drinking problem wa and wants to help curb the habit, and says there's a medicine that may make him, well, lose the taste of alcohol. Freeing people from inhibitions is always good, right? So let's help. We need to get two lots of Ferris blood from Ferris and Magna Forest, and five Poggle hot pots from Crow's Paggles in Aerith Sea. Once you've done your farming, give them to Nello. Bonus points if you already have what you need. Get Karalth in the Affinity Chart, who can be found here during the day. Then talk to Z Zane right next to him. He's looking to go adventuring, but needs water that never freezes no matter how cold it gets. Hmm... Ricky has a comment about that, but it's quite perplexing indeed. So we're going to need multiple samples. First is Kasharpa water, which is found behind Kasharpa Falls on Bionis Leg. Next is Magna water, found in the Great Magna Falls directly west of the Divine Sanctuary landmark. That's going to be quite a swim. Finally is Statue Water. This is found northeast of the Sororal Statue's landmark in Satoral Marsh. Now that we have all three, return to Zane to clear the quest. Are you that... The last of the quests that don't require affinity, Ruthen has, a, has something for you. He's over here at night. In order to build a deciphering machine for some ancient texts his team found, he needs six pieces of sturdy armor from Flavel Andos at Aerith Sea, and Shulk comments on it. After gathering all that, give them to Ruthen to, to end this quest. Another simple one. At one and a quarter stars affinity for this region, Karalf has a quest yes. for you. It's a continuation of the never freezing water quest I just covered. Dunban will comment about this, but Karalf lost, has lost his chalk container and needs it back. Well, it's found in a remote place in Aerith Sea. It's a place called Anu Shore. You can find it by swimming north from the High Entia Tomb skip travel point. The item is only accessible by swimming into the tunnel on the cliffside just south of the shore. Once you've got it, return it to Karalf to clear the quest.
At one and a half stars and clearing a friend in need and teaching materials, Merlise has a qu new quest for you that Malia will comment on. Some monsters have suddenly attacked and the Imperial Guard needs help, so we'll need to talk to Lacroix to make it official. But not only do we need to get rid of two Buono Nebulae, but he'll ask you what if you it? can take on two, bo two Bono Nebulae as well on another quest. I'll show where these can be found. They both have counter spikes that cause debuffs. After taking them on, talk to Lacroix, then Merlise to clear the quest. What is it? This represents no problem whatsoever. This would be easy. This won't take long. When you can share it. The two adventurers aren't ready yet. At one and a half stars affinity and their previous quest cleared, Zane will request something new that Ryan will comment on. They need rations, so we need to get Orthless Liver from Lakebed Orthless down at Colony 9. This monster hasn't appeared there until you accepted this quest, so once you got the item, return to Zane to clear the quest. After the previous quest is cleared and Marial is on the affinity chart, talk to Elior somewhere near the central teleport pad, northeast of the Fountain of Eternity. He has a quest, he wants to be like those two adventurers, and Ryan has a comment on it. First, we need to talk to Muriel. She's over here at night by the Imperial Palace. She suggests the boy needs a telescope, and we need a couple of silver X plates from Stella X at Aerith C. So go ahead and get some. Once you got him, talk to Muriel again so she can make the telescope, then back to Elior to clear the quest. Finally moving on with the next story beat, after leaving for the High Entia Tomb, and at one and a quarter stars affinity, and the deciphering machine cleared, talk to Nerath for a new quest. Ricky will comment. So the machine needs to be upgraded since it's not incredibly accurate, so we need a bunch of parts. We need five green diodes in the High Entia Tomb, and three Astus remote units from Hover Astus in the same place. Once you've got them all, give them to Nerath to clear the quest. So here's an interesting one. Me. This next quest is mutually exclusive to another similar quest that only becomes available after Mechanus Core is cleared and the quest The Missing Boy is accepted. Check the Aerith Sea video for more info, but for this one, talk to Talia and accept her quest. It'll be available after clearing the previous quest shown and with affinity at two stars. You'll have to take on Dogmatic Gogol at the Place of Judgment in Satoral Marsh. Once done, talk to her near the altar to clear the quest. She'll then make her way back to Alchemoth. Oh, 
At two and a half stars affinity and starlight seeker cleared, Elior has another quest that Ricky will comment on. He says he wants an even more powerful telescope and knows of a clever Nopon that could help. He gives you the telescope and asks you to give it to Kalika so it can be upgraded. So Kalika is found here, north of the Imperial Palace. Hello? He needs something from the High Entia tomb to upgrade the telescope, huh? Well, it's in a hidden second treasury room. From the Valley of Emperors skip travel point, head east. In the hall, look north to find that one of the openings filled with bright light actually has, hides a hallway behind it. Go through it to find the attachment part. Careful, you might get ambushed by a unique monster. Once you got it, give it to Kalika to upgrade the telescope, then give it to Elior to clear the quest. Once you reach Valak Mountain, clear the Building Bridges quest and reach one and a half stars affinity, Vidian has a quest for you. She's found on the southern pathway surrounding the city. You'll need to collect Morning Dew Ice from Befog or Pedestal on Valak Mountain. It only appears at 5 in the morning, so head over there and find it. Talk to Vidian and she'll use it to make part of an affection seal to give to Lasunia. So go ahead and talk to Lasunia and then to Vidian to clear the quest. After clearing the Preparing for Adventure quests and at two and a half stars affinity, Muriel offers a quest. <laughs> the two adventurers are in danger, but they haven't and they haven't come back. You need to rescue both Zane and Karalf, but they're in a rather dangerous place. It's Three Sage Summit, and that's essentially the highest point of Valak Mountain. To reach that point, I suggest equipping some quick step gems, then go down from Zocade Pass to find a path below the first side path on your right. Are you that? Melt the ice with the magma rock you get from story progress, then turn left. Follow the path, then make a huge jump at the end of the ice slope. Both of the adventurers are up here, so talk to them, and then head back to Muriel to clear the quest. Now, this is mutually yes. exclusive with another quest if you waited until after Makana's core to do this. Check the Valak Mountain video for more info. Only after Makana's core, this quest shows up during the Restoring the Capital quest. You'll find out that High Entia are trapped in Alchemoth, so you'll need to find a way to reactivate the transporters. You'll need to complete both Broken Aether Furnace quests from Frontier Village in order to restore the power. Once done, head to Whitewing Palace, which is southeast of the Great Hall. Talk to Vidian, and the quest will be cleared. And that is every single quest in Alchemoth. This has been Mr. Bacon Bits. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. And I will see you again on the next video. Bye-bye. Hey.